Member Saanich, North and the Islands. I thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just I think it's important to just acknowledge a couple of things uh, before I ask a, a few questions here. Um, one of those is that uh, I think back uh, into fairly recent history and remember uh, our colleagues from uh, previous parliaments uh, when they were then on the official opposition side of this uh, house, the BC NDP colleagues, um, getting, uh, you know, I think, very, very irritated by uh, the former government's um, use of enabling legislation. And there's very good reason why uh, our colleagues who were then sitting on this side of the house would be irritated by enabling legislation. Because what enabling legislation does is it asks the House to approve of something that only we have the authority to approve of before the minister who's moving the legislation forward is prepared to put in front of this House what it is that we're approving. It actually undermines and erodes this democracy, which is what the members uh, on, that, that were on this side of the House previously in the previous parliament said we hear so often for 16 years, for 16 years, we heard it all, all day, every day here. But there is good reason to be irritated about enabling legislation because only the members of this house have the authority to divest some of our power to statutory decision makers and to other decision makers uh, within the bureaucracy. And that's what we're being asked to do here. We're being asked as elected officials, and this minister, it needs to, the public needs to know that this minister is asking the elected members of this democracy to hand power over to uh, aspects of the bureaucracy without understanding the full impl in implication. The Office of the, uh, uh, of the Information and Privacy Commissioner has raised that. Our, our colleague from Abbotsford South just read the passage uh, on the record that the uh, Office of the Information and Private, the, the, the Commissioner himself has said, look, you know, this is, uh, the, there's, could be dire consequences here to divesting the power or to passing the power on down the line. So in this debate, I've heard, and in previous debates, I've heard and seen this government undermine the, the very aspects of this House that we should be holding and propping up and, and maintaining in this chamber and in this house. Undermined it. The committee, the special committee uh, to review this very act is a committee that is struck not by the government, but by this house. All the members of this place passed that motion unanimously to strike that committee. It's an act of this house, not of the government. The government moves the motion, but it's our committee to do our work on behalf of our democracy. The government is treating it as if it's something that they can just simply ignore. This minister, when asked these questions, has brushed it off as if it's a meaningless committee that will do work after the uh, bill. The, the comment earlier was the committee should feel, you know, essentially feel lucky that it gets to be the first committee to review the new act, which is absolutely the, not the purpose of that committee. It is to inform the process that this government and this minister has decided to put ahead of the process. The minister has said, well, you know, um, lots changed. Agreed, a lot has changed since 2021. I'm on the PIPA uh, review. A lot has changed uh, annually. That doesn't mean that we give it less scrutiny by all members of this place. This, what's going on here today, what went on with the amendment, what went on with the second reading debate, is a result of this minister and that government putting this process ahead of the process where we could gain all party support for an initiative. That's exactly what that consensus building process is in a special committee to review an act. The turmoil that this minister is facing, the turmoil that her staff is facing with this today is a result 
of bad process and a government that is snubbing its nose at this Democratic House. And they're doing it with enabling legislation, which further erodes it. And then the comments that I heard earlier today, not only have we undermined the authority, is she, uh, the minister undermined the authority of this House, the minister has undermined the authority of an independent officer of this House. We should be outraged. We are outraged. Yeah, I might be outraged. I am outraged. And the reason why I'm outraged is because that independent officer is an officer of this place, not of the government. We put together a committee that hires an independent officer that scrutinizes and ensures that the information and privacy of British Columbians is being properly administered and properly protected. This process undermines that. This minister is undermining that. This government doesn't care. Snubbed its nose. No speakers. Silence. Every time that a question has been answered, this minister has responded with a response, I can't wait to get to another question, a different question. Not even honoring the question that's in front. It's infuriating. And it is entirely inconsistent with everything that has been said about enabling legislation in this, his, in this House for 16 years. Yesterday, I asked the minister on Clause 1 a question. The 2010 Legislative Committee recommended that a section be added to Section 2, which is what Clause 1 is amending, to require that an infringement of the right to privacy must be proportional to the public interest to be lawful. I said, this bill doesn't do that. Then I asked why. The minister responded that the act, as it currently stands, contemplates the protection of people's privacy already. When has this act not contemplated people's privacy? Minister. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so through you to the member. Um, so the, the recommendation, of course, was considered. Um, and uh, we feel that uh, the overarching principle statement that the member is looking for is embedded throughout the Act and through the amendments as well, strengthening privacy uh, for individuals. 
Member. The question was, at what point did this act not protect people's privacy? Minister. Thank you, Chair. So the act has always protected people's privacy, and we're strengthening that. Member. That's correct. The act has always uh, protected people's privacy. And in 2010, the committee, uh, the special committee, quote, also considered an amendment proposed by the OIPC, the Office of the, uh, of the Privacy Commissioner. Its submission pointed out that Section 2 does not acknowledge that an infringement of the right to privacy must be reasonable and justifiable, whereas this concept is in the Personal Information Protection Act. The committee at that time uh, stated that they support the amendment because they think it's desirable to harmonize the language of the public sector and the private sector privacy laws wherever practicable. Can the minister please identify where in this act uh, this specific recommendation uh, which is uh, in Clause 1, um, has been achieved as, as the, uh, has been achieved. Minister. Thank you, uh, Chair. So, so while I, I, I very much respect the members' um, um, thoughts on this and the committee's recommendation, uh, which were thoughtfully uh, um, considered throughout this process, uh, they are two different acts, and we feel uh, that this um, that the act already allows for that, and we are continuing to strengthen uh, um, privacy throughout our amendments.